Hello, this is Cheryl Oaks from Wells, Maine. I am very happy to be here with Igniting Innovation, where we can give our students new ways of work and success. I'm also pleased that this is the 2014 K-12 online conference and that I am sharing with you my passion for digital tools for challenge learners. We are going to be leveling the playing field for them as I share some of my favorite apps and extensions. A lot of these are Chrome apps and extensions where we can level the playing field for challenge learners. By the time that we're done, you'll have seen many apps and extensions for educators and as many apps as we can share with students. So the apps and extensions for educators. The first one I want to talk about is Slide Speech Convert, and it's an extension. And I use it when I am sharing uh, work that I have done, and I want to put it online so people have access to it later. But I also found a way to use it with my students. I have a student who created a slideshow, and after he did all of this work on his slideshow, he was really nervous about presenting it to his class. So I found Slide Speech Convert. The way to use it is that you file download as a PowerPoint, and then you go and create your account at Slide Speech, and you upload your slideshow, and it turns it into a movie for you. So here's an example of what I created and it shows you how to make um, a slideshow to an essay using power, um, the Google Slides. So here we go. In one quick lesson, set the stage. I know you can write forever about this topic, but keep it short. Just one idea and one example. Come on, it is only one idea and one example. You can do this. So I created that slideshow for my students so that they would be able to have one slide, one prompt, and be successful rather than looking at a blank page. Um, slide Speech Convert has a great frequently asked question website, so I put that link in there for you as well. Read and Write by Text Help, they have been fabulous. They've offered some Google tools, and we've we use them in a Google Doc. You can see that they are, hi they are um, hiding up above on this, this um, drop-down menu. And I'm going to go through, first of all, and clear all my highlights. And I got this article from um, the Portland Press Herald. And I want to take and highlight all the places in yellow. So I'm going to use my yellow highlighter tool for Portland and South Portland. I'm going to use my green highlighter tool for anything that's related to time, any vocabulary that's related to time. And once I've done that, I can click on my collect highlights. And behind the scenes, it's going to collect my highlights. So now I have all of my words and examples right there. I'm going to get my key that I put over on this page, bring it to my highlights, and add it to my highlights so that someone would know that anything in yellow is about place and anything in green is about time. This would be a great tool for students who have read an article and annotated, and now they needed to categorize their vocabulary or categorize it for them to study or write something later on. So this is a great tool for collecting things. It's also a great tool for reading. You can click highlight and click the play button. Google's for Story Barge, which first docked in Portland Harbor last October. I like this um, read and write because it highlights each word as the student goes along. Um, it also has speech input and you can try out this tool if you are a classroom teacher and it is free. Um, the student version does have a pro version and a free version and some of the tools are available for free 
for students. But this is a great tool for educators and then you may find you want to have it um, in your school district as well. When you're working also in a Google Doc, there's a tool called Research. And we like this in our school system because our students stay right in their doc as they're doing research. And so let me just research estuary. Estuary means where the river meets the sea. And so if I'm starting my estuary research, I can put my links over here and I can gather more links without having to leave my page like that. I can go to preview and I can look at the web page. If I decide that I like it, I can insert the link. And let's move that link down here. I'm going to insert my link. And the other thing that I can do is I can collect my citations right within my doc. So if I were working on this and had to leave to go to another class, it's already saved and ready for me to come back to on another day. So this has been a huge time saver for our students. The other thing that is great about Google, and let me just get to Google right now, is I can use different tools in the Google search. So first thing I can do is I can search by voice. Estuary. According to Wikipedia, an estuary is a partly enclosed coastal body of brackish water with one or more rivers or streams flowing into it and with a free connection to the open sea. So here it is. I wasn't able to spell estuary, but I could speak it. I can find the articles that I need. If I go to more search tools, I can drop down to all results and I can find the reading level. So if I'm a student, I can see that 30% are basic, 48% are intermediate, and 22% are advanced. It's usually about basic is up to 10 years old, intermediate 10 to 14, and advanced is 14 plus. So if I'm a basic reader, I can select basic and it just gives me the basic reading level for um, choices. So that has been a really great thing for our students to independently manage. I can go to um, an image. I didn't mean to go to that image, but I can click on images here and I can then take an image and drag it up to my Google search. It opens an image search for me and it takes that image and finds similar images that are, um, are available for estuaries and it may even give me the estuary place. So check out reading level and check out examples of image search and voice search. I'm going to move on to apps and extensions for students. One of the apps that I like is iSpeech and I'm going to find um, an article at News ELA. News ELA is a nonfiction literacy site that's categorized into great categories. And once I get to that website, I'm going to highlight certain part, a part of this article. And I'm going to click on the speaker. Dallas, Texas hyphen a man in Texas has a deadly disease called Ebola. He is the first person out. So this allows your students who are challenged with reading and vocabulary to listen to the same article that their peers are listening to. Read and write text from Text Help also allows us to do that by going to the read write icon right in the URL locator and so it drops down a floating bar and I can highlight and listen. Dallas, Texas, a man in Texas has a deadly disease called Ebola. And what's nice about that is it highlights every word. 
I have some of the tools that I also had on my Google Doc right here on the web page. I'm able to highlight and collect uh, vocabulary and categorize it, and then I'll be able to use it later. Another um, website is called Rewordify, and I can take information. Let's go right back here to my Ebola site. Oh, I'm going to click on a higher reading level. Uh, News ELA allows you to read different reading levels, so I'm going to put that at a higher lexile. I'm going to copy and paste into Rewordify. And when I do that, it takes the text, <clears throat> and when I rewordify it, it takes hard words and makes them easier. So it found five words of difficulty, changed them around from, here's an example, from extremely to very. When I'm at rewordify, I can also, as a teacher, look at the different learning activities and print activities that they have based on specific articles. So I can make a closed reading activity, or I can make a word bank, or I can come up with a quiz. So Rewordify is great for students because it helps them Rewordify difficult text. It's great for teachers because they can make different um, quizzes and reading extensions for their students. Dogo News, similar to News ELA, but I like it because it also has um, great vocabulary that is hyperlinked. So when you open up the article, it gives you the Common Core Standard for grades 3 to 8, grades K to 3. It, you can build a word search based on the article. You have vocabulary that is hyperlinked with a definition. And it also gives you a nice geography piece so you can see where this article takes place in the world. So Dogo News has been a great addition to our nonfiction literacy as well as News ELA. One of the great um, extensions that my students have been enjoying is called TLDR Too Long Didn't Read. So I go to my extensions and I drop down and find it. It does a little bit of work on the page and it takes that long article and summarizes it, it summarizes it into a paragraph. Now I don't know about you but whenever I put a long paragraph in front of my students they just immediately shut down. But with TLDR, they read this quick paragraph summary, and nine times out of ten, they want to read more. They want to find out more information about that particular article. So TLDR is great, works on most web pages, and it's been something that has spurred our students on to reading more. Readability. For students who are distracted by everything that's going on in the page, this is another extension. It's a little red couch. And when you click on it and click Read Now, it takes the distractions off the table and it gives you the content of the article. You're also able to change the font size with some of the tools that are in Readability. And you can print from here and you can share it and um, send it to someone else if you want. Last app that I'm going to share with you is called Readability. And I get that from my pages of apps. I mean, um, it's Dick Denote, sorry. So I go into my apps. It's not an extension. It has its own page. And I click on Dick Denote. And you'll notice that I already have thank you for joining me at the K-12 online conference. So I had um, spoken that. I can punctuate it. I'm going to go down and look at another line. With the Dictonote free, you only get one page to um, make your text on, but then you could copy and paste it into Google Docs. So I'm going to turn on my microphone. I want to thank you for joining me today with K-12 
online conference. Coming up, you'll see notes from my students. Thank you. So I turned off the microphone. I can go back and punctuate this. I can um, copy it into my Google Docs if I wanted. But this has been um, a game changer for some reluctant writers again. So back to my slideshow. I think I've shown you some extensions for educators, apps and extensions for students. And here's what my students say about these digital tools. TLDR is great for me. It takes a long article and summarizes it for me. Then I can increase the size of the article if I'm interested. I like New ZLA because I find good nonfiction articles and I can choose the reading level that's comfortable for me. My favorite is readability because it takes junk and distractions away from the page and I can do my homework and research. So I want you to stay in touch. You can find me at CherylOaks.com, on Twitter, CherylOaks50, Google+, there's my link. And I'm one-third of a part of the Seedlings group where we've had um, podcasts for educators to educators. And last but not least, if you get a chance, um, Google, Google came and did a search story on me and one of my students, and I have put that link in here too. I want to say thanks to everybody, and... Over and out, this is Cheryl Oaks in Wells, Maine. Goodbye.